The Blood Parrot Cichlid is a hybrid in the hobby that is known for their fun personality and unique shape. I've been keeping them personally for about two years now and wanted to answer some of the most common questions I get. Hi there, it's Connor. Welcome to or back to my channel. So if you've been to my channel before, you know I keep blood parrots. They're actually not in this aquarium anymore right now. I moved them to a 55 gallon. Um, just to give these fish more room and my polar parrots bred, so there's a bunch of babies in there. So as they grow up, they'll need more space and such. But um, anyway, as you know, blood parrots are some of my favorite fish I've kept. Um, I love the personalities and they're just very fun. And I made a number of videos on them and gotten a bunch of questions. Um, they're definitely one of the more popular videos I've had on my channel. So today I just wanted to go through some of the most common questions I got on them and kind of just go through it. So I broke them into categories. And so the first thing I want to touch on is aggression and tank mates. So anyway, let's get into it. So the first question, are blood parrots aggressive? And to kind of follow up on that, can you keep them in a community? So overall they're rated as semi-aggressive and that's a pretty good rating for them. They're usually not too aggressive. They're known to be on the peaceful side for cichlids, especially cichlids of the size to get to, which is close to eight inches. They generally are pretty peaceful. They generally won't bother the fish, and if they do, they'll just chase them away from their area. In general, they can go in a community pretty well. Um, there are a few caveats to that. One, obviously you don't want to keep fish too small because they're more likely to be aggressive to them and see them as food. You definitely don't want fish that are small enough to fit in their mouth, like a neon tetra or something. But in general, they're overall pretty peaceful compared to cichlids of that size, as I said. Since they are cichlids though, they will tend to stick out territories and pick the area of the tank they like, especially if it's a cave or a hiding spot of some sort, and they'll be more likely to chase fish away from there. So really, as long as you have a tank large enough for them, um, they should be good with so many tank mates. There's actually so many tank mates you can uh, mix them with. They uh, are, that's one of the really good qualities about blood parrots. The next question I've gotten quite a few times and I experienced this myself, it's what do I do if mine are chasing each other aggressively? So this seems to be a common thing with blood parrots and mine, when I got them, I have two. When they were younger, this happened um, all the time and it was really just one chasing the other. It turned out that one was a male and the one that was getting chased was a female. But um, basically when they're young, because they're cichlids, they're gonna make a hierarchy and they're probably gonna be chasing each other. Now, if you have only two blood parrots like me, and that's a common number for people to get, I think, because they get kind of large, but uh, you want them to have a buddy. Um, the one will tend to dominate the other, especially when young. So I think that's a common behavior. I don't think it's anything to worry about as long as they're not really bullying them too bad. Make sure there's no damage being done. And like I said, with aggression overall, the best thing you can do is have enough hiding spaces or even more for all of them that they can fit in completely. And that'll let them kind of hide from each other. And uh, just having line of sight breaks uh, will also help with this in general. Can you keep them with larger tank mates? And by this, I mean monster fish like arowana, Oscars, giant grammies, stuff like that. The overall answer is yes. I've seen them in a bunch of tanks with very large tank mates and tank mates that are even known to be aggressive and predators like arowana. And I've seen it done successful so many times. Now there definitely are caveats to this and I haven't done it myself personally. I've never kept fish that large, but they're a fish that's generally peaceful, so they won't really bother the aggressive fish, but they're also pretty tough and they'll hold their own. And I think they definitely give off kind of an alpha personality in the tank, at least that was my experience with mine. Now, I will say you don't want to get very small blood parrots with maybe like an arowana who grows pretty quick because they might outgrow the blood parrots and become food. Uh, you, don't want the, you just don't want the blood parrots to be small enough for the larger fish to think they can be food or want to pick on them. So I'd recommend probably mixing uh, medium to large blood parrots with some of the larger fish and even probably have those larger fish um, maybe smaller at the time. What do you do if your blood parrots are super shy and are always hiding in the tank, especially if you come over the tank, they just run and hide and you almost never see them come out. Now this is definitely a common problem people have. And even before I got blood parrots, I kind of knew about this. A lot of people said this and mine, if I go up too quick, um, you know, even though they know me, they still run and hide in their cave. That's just, they're kind of a uh, shy fish in that regard, especially just at least to humans. Um, so that's kind of just, it is what it is. It's kind of a tree of them. Now to reduce them hiding and to have them come out more, especially when you're around, um, what I can recommend most is having more than one. It seems the less you have, the more common that they hide a lot is. So 
Obviously tank size is kind of a limit there, but um, the more you have, the more likely they'll be come out. And then the next thing is have a lot of hiding spaces, but have ones where you can see them. So for example, you could have flower pots a lot of people use. So they'll be able to hide in the cave, but you'll be able to see them clearly just in the cave. Or if you have, um, for example, a big, uh, I can't point to it, <laughs> it's all backwards. A big uh, cave like this, or I have some of them in my older aquascapes, you can see that I can clearly see my blood parrots, and even though they'll hide in there, I can still visually see them, and I think that'll help. One, them feel comfortable with you, because they'll feel safe in the cave, so they can slowly come out and then see you once they're comfortable. Um, and then also, you'll just be able to see them, so even if they are still hiding a lot and don't come out of the caves, you can still see them. They're not completely just totally hidden from your view. Okay, so getting on to the next kind of topic, the uh, next section of questions here on appearance. Just a few questions here. So first is how large do they get? So on average as an adult, they'll reach between six to eight inches long. Eight inches pretty much being at the maximum there. And yeah, they'll definitely slow down as they get to five to six inches. Um, they are almost as tall as they are long, maybe like 75%. Um, their height gets to about 75% of their um, length and they do get very chunky, so they are already large fish in that regard. Now to follow up on the question, how fast do they grow? I think they grow decently fast for a fish, um, at least compared to other fish I've kept. Now I got mine at around three inches, and in about a year from that, they were six inches. Now once they got to about the six inch mark, they significantly slowed down growing. Um, I'd say, you know, a year after that, maybe they were um, another inch longer than that, but uh, you definitely notice the slowdown in difference. And I would say you can probably expect them when they're young, maybe to get um, about a half inch a month or so, something like that on average. And um, yeah, that's kind of just how it is. I think once, if you get them very small, in, uh, within two years, you can expect them to pretty much be a full size, maybe growing slowly as they're old, but um, I think that's generally what you can uh, expect from them. What combination of species is this hybrid from? So if you don't know, blood parrots are a hybrid, which means they were mixed of different species of fish. They're not native in the wild. And so there is a bunch of theories. You'll read this. I wish I could have had like a distinct, this is exactly where they came from, but there's actually tons of theories online. Um, generally what I found most commonly between all the posts and especially the reliable ones, uh, people who wrote in articles and such is um, they were first created in Taiwan in the late 1980s, but they didn't really make it to stores, at least not here in the West, uh, until around the 2000s. Now, there are different theories about the specific species they came from. They definitely came from American cichlids, different ones. Most commonly, it's thought it was either a Midas or Red Devil cichlid and a Redhead cichlid. That's definitely the most common theory. Um, it's hard to know for sure. And with hybrids, especially to get the specific blood parrot features with that mouth they really like, that people really like, it definitely could have been that they had to crossbreed several times. You know, they could have crossed a red devil and a redhead and then had to cross another red devil into that redhead to get it, for example. Um, that's just an example. I'm not saying that happened. Um, there are some reports of several being mixed in there, so it could even be a chain of multiple, but. Um, that's kind of the best uh, the best answer I can get for where they come from. It's uh, not really known, but uh, a Midas or Red Devil mixed with a Redhead Cichlid is the most likely uh, scenario. Next is, what do I do if my blood parrot is fading in color? And I did make a full video on this, so I'll link it below. But um, definitely check that out if you're really curious about this. But it's very common to see blood parrots when they're older, full adults to be faded. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, there's several things you can do about this. The most important probably is to have food. And the simple way I can go about this is just to, to get food for cichlids that's known to enhance color. That's really um, the best you can do. And then also just give them a varied diet. Uh, the next that I found for mine is having a lighting system with a red hue. You can see the tank I have here it has like a pinkish hue there. So it has red lights. I found that significantly helps the color that um, they show off. And it's just even the red um, reflecting off of them helps show them a much brighter light. And then lastly, this will go for any fish, but just having healthy water, making sure um, everything's in check, making sure everything's stable and fits the parameters that they like, which is a pretty uh, average range for uh, tropical tanks. But anyway, just make sure your tank's healthy, you're doing water changes regularly, and that's probably the most important thing. Um, and then the others can really just enhance it. What do I do if my blood parrot has black spots? 
So now this is something I experienced when my blood pressure were younger and a lot of people experience. It's very common. There are several reasons that this can happen. The most common reason is just from stress. And I definitely noticed when mine were younger and they would get it, that it most, most commonly happened after water changes or if something went off in the tank or added a new tank mate. So stress is the most likely cause for it. They generally fade in about a week was my experience. So they would get them about a week later, they would, they would fade and it would go away. Um, the things I would check for is um, if you do see them, uh, the black spots appear on them. Uh, test your water right away. It's probably the number one thing to do. Otherwise, uh, think about whether any changes in the tank. Was there anything that could have caused stress? And um, lastly, just uh, do a water change and make sure you're keeping up with uh, your maintenance schedule. Um, otherwise, they'll probably fade. And I think it's common for younger blood parrots to get them even if everything is perfect and in check. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think it kind of is just an indicator that can tell you, hey, there might be a problem. There might be some stress for them. One other thing to note though, is some blood parrots do have black spots to keep throughout their life. And that just is what it is. There are a type of blood parrot called tiger parrots, which have a lot of those black markings and they almost kind of look like tigers, hence the name. So um, there are ones that, you know, just have a little bit of black in them and they'll keep that through their life. So um, if that happens, I don't think it, it's a big issue if everything else checks out in your tank. Next is how do you tell males apart from females? So this really isn't super easy to do. I personally know minor male and female from two reasons. One is breeding behavior and the second is size. So my male is definitely larger than my female and this is just uh, one of the things that can kind of help you tell. Um, generally male blood parents will be larger than females, not always, but in general. Now it's really gonna be hard to tell if you don't have both in your tank, um, you're really not gonna have any comparison. Um, so that's kind of, uh, you know, you really need both to be able to do that. The next and probably the easiest, if you are going to have males and females in the same tank is breeding behavior. You'll see that females lay eggs and then you'll have the males kind of, um, go and they have breeding cubes come out, out and they'll kind of just rub up against them. So that's one way that's probably the clearest way to know for sure. That's how I know for sure. And one other thing is females sometimes have more rounded fins. And mine don't, mine both have the same type of fins, so this didn't help me, but um, that is one thing. If your one does have more rounded fins, they might be a female, but uh, not always. So it's kind of like, it could help, but not be 100%. What does it mean if a blood parrot is labeled a King Kong parrot? So this just simply is a variation of a blood parrot that gets larger, hence the name King Kong. So blood parrots on average get between six to eight inches as an adult. A King Kong parrot is gonna get between 10 to 12 inches, uh, most likely. All right, next I have some questions on tank setup. So the first is just what kind of tank setup would I recommend for them? Overall, I definitely recommend having caves and hunting spots. They love them, they love to hide in them, they feel most comfortable like that. It'll help reduce aggression and it'll let them just stake out their own territory and that'll kind of be their area to tank and help them not bother other fish. So that's the big thing is just have Caves or hiding spaces big enough for them. And as you know, they get to a pretty large size, so you do need um, pretty large um, caves to fit them. For water parameters, what's generally recommended is a pH from anywhere from 6.5 to 8.0, temperature between 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and a hardness between two to 25 degrees general hardness. So it's a pretty big, good range on that. Um, they're pretty toggled to a lot of different parameters. You just kind of want to keep it stable, whatever you're going to keep them at, just try to keep them mostly around that and uh, not having it fluctuate too much. As far as substrate, you can really keep them in any substrate. Um, I don't think it really matters. Um, I've always kept mine in sand and they do like to dig it around. Um, as you kind of enjoy it, they love clearing it out of their tank or not the tank, their cave, but um, I don't think substrate is picky. And for letting in water flow, I'd probably just say moderate is ideal. If you have other fish that either need um, weak or um, high, it's probably not going to be a problem for them. Um, just probably moderate is the best though. Next is how many can I keep in different sizes of aquariums? So kind of what's the minimum tank size and how many can I, how many, how large are a tank do I need for two? So the minimum tank size is generally 29 gallons, 30 gallons, 29 is the common size. That's why I say 29. So really you would only want one of them because they do get pretty large, but you can keep one of them fine and probably even have a few smaller fish in there. At a 55 gallon tank size, you can have three. And then a 75 gallon, I'd say you can have five and then you can kind of go up from there. Um, if you want two, I'd say probably the minimum is 40, but a 55 is gonna be better. And then in the 55, you could either have a third or you could have some other fish in there and have plenty of space. 
can you mix them with plants? So overall, I'd say use caution with this. You can, but really it's gonna be um, sturdy plants, they call them epiphytes, where you can attach them to like driftwood and rocks and they're not actually like rooted plants. So their roots are pretty uh, strong and they can't get damaged as much. And I say this because blood parrots love to dig, they love to move decorations around. So you'll probably have them knocking plants out. Um, you can see, uh, the whole blood parrots in here, but uh, when the clown loaches and such, they have knocked a plant up here. And that'll happen all the time with blood parrots. I've had so many plants get knocked out even with um, gluing them and stuff. But um, because they do that, if you have plants that need to be in the substrate and they have delicate roots, they'll likely get damaged and they probably won't last too long. So definitely sturdier plants. Some examples are Anubias, Java fern, moss, or hornwort. Those are all ones I've used successfully with blood parrots. And you will likely need to attach them to decorations with super glue, weights, or fishing line or something like that. And so getting towards this end here, I just have a few more miscellaneous questions that not really fit in any category that I'm gonna go through. So the first one is, can you breed blood parrots? And the answer is probably not. It's technically possible, but most males are infertile. So the females will lay eggs, but the males won't be able to fertilize them. And that is what my pair is. My female will lay eggs probably once every other month, um, but the male will try to fertilize them, it won't succeed. And after a few days, the fungus over and then they'll just eat them all. Breeders generally keep fertile males if there are ones. And so most you get won't be fertile. And so just keep that in mind is you can try, but there's a good chance you won't be able to. What do you do if yours is having trouble eating? So actually with my female, I experienced this. She has more of a narrow mouth and you'll have this with them sometimes. So because of that, she can't really fit that many foods in her mouth. Like the larger cichlid pellets, she just can't get in her mouth. And uh, the kind of annoying thing is foods that's too small, she just doesn't pay attention to. So there was a period when she was growing probably in between the five to six inch mark where I kind of started to struggle with food to be able to feed her. I would notice that she really wasn't eating that much. She would try to, but she really couldn't get that much in. And other people have asked me about this. It can be a problem if you get a blood parrot with a mouth that is a bit deformed. Um, it's one of the unfortunate things about the species. What I recommend, because I tried a lot of different things for this, is trying different foods. And so notice if yours likes going for the floating food or the sinking food more. Um, I've had periods where mine would only eat sinking food and then periods where they would be fine with both. Give different foods of the ones that are most likely to eat and try. Uh, unfortunately, you're gonna have to just get a few different types of food and spend money on it. Um, if it's just like cichlid food and stuff, you're probably gonna be able to feed it to your other blood parrots and other fish, so uh, not really a problem there. Other things you can try is there's gel food that a brand called Rapashi makes. And so with this, um, just a powder, you mix some boiling water and put it in the refrigerator and then you can cut it into little squares, little cubes. The good thing about this is you can cut it as small as you want. Um, and it is kind of, it's a gel, so it's like flexible. So you cut this pretty small, but not too small that they'll ignore it. And uh, this is a good way that they can easily get food. Um, another thing I've had a lot of success with is just frozen breadworms because as they thaw, they'll just be in the tank and then you eat them super easy. So that's another thing that you can try. And that was the last question. So that does wrap it up. Um, if you watched the whole video, I thank you for watching it. And if you have any other questions on blood parrots at all, let me know, I'd be happy to answer. And if I end up getting enough, I definitely do another part of this. But just to close out here, if you find the video helpful, likes on it and subscriptions to my channel are very appreciated and they definitely help me out a lot. But anyways, I'll catch everyone next time.